a 68 year old woman is brought to the emergency department due to worsening lethargy her family states that the patient has had the headache and nausea for the past several days and today she was confused and lethargic medical history is significant for ischemic stroke previous with no residual neurologic deficit seizure disorder hypertension type 2 diabetes bipolar disorder vital signs are within normal limits and on physical examination the patient is somnolent responding only to painful stimulus mucous membranes are moist jugular venous pressure is normal the lungs are clear to auscultation and the heart sounds are normal there is no extremity edema laboratory evaluation shows serum sodium level of 118 milliequivalents per liter we know that that is hyponatremia the normal sodium range is between 136 to 146 somewhere so this is a case of hyponatremia and blood urea nitrogen serum creatinine are within the normal limits serum osmolality is low and the urine osmolality is high they are asking us which of the following medications is the most likely cause of this patient's condition so what exactly is going on in this question the patient is lethargic somnolent confused and there is hyponatremia going on if we look at the serum osmolality serum osmolality is low serum osmolality low means that the serum is kind of dilute right so we have kind of like dilute serum and urine osmolality is high which means that the urine is a bit concentrated okay moving on we now need to place like which of the following options first one is canagliflozin canagliflozin we know is a anti diabetic drug it is a sodium glucose co transport inhibitor in the renal proximal tubule pct right it is going to block the sodium glucose co transporter in the pct if that happens we are going to get more and more of glucose in the urine and once the glucose is coming out in urine it is going to act like a medium for the growth of bacteria and lead to lots of uti so that's like the side effect of canagliflozin it does not lead to any serum osmolality changes as such so we can remove that option canagliflozin then going on to carbamazepine so the patient has seizure yeah here they have given seizure disorder so in seizures we can give like anti epileptic carbamazepine so it makes sense that carbamazepine and its side effect we know one of the side effects of carbamazepine is syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion si adh or sida as some prefer to call it okay so in case of sida what would happen is basically there is lots of adh and this adh is going to act on the v2 receptor of the collecting duct remember v1 receptor of vasopressin is for regulating blood pressure and v2 receptor is the one that is associated with the all the water reabsorption regulating the osmolality of the body so we'll take into account v2 receptor so adh will act on the v2 receptor and that will lead to reabsorption of water in the collecting duct right so we are going to reabsorb the water reabsorb water now because of water reabsorption what will happen to the serum well we are reabsorbing water so serum is going to get kind of diluted and we'll get low serum osmolality what will happen to the urine well the urine is going to lose its water content so because of that the urine osmolality is going to increase so that fits in correctly with the question so we are going to keep that option for now moving on to other options like we have furosemide now we know that furosemide is a loop diuretic it inhibits sodium reabsorption in the loop of helium if we are inhibiting sodium reabsorption we are inhibiting water reabsorption also like water follows sodium right so we are removing sodium and water in the urine we are excreting sodium and water now if we are excreting sodium we'll get hyponatremia like it is there in this question 
right so furosemide is also a good option why not furosemide because furosemide also can cause hyponatremia by causing sodium excretion well if we look here in the question they have given us that the patient has mucous membrane moist jugular venous pressure normal lungs are clear to auscultation and there is no extremity edema right there is no extremity edema another big big clue also given in the question is that the patient's blood urea nitrogen and serum creatinine are within normal limits what they are trying to imply is the patient is euvolemic the patient is euvolemic the volume is not being affected and later on we'll come to know that sida is actually the one i'll explain it properly that sida is the one that is euvolemic if it was furosemide which is a diuretic then the patient will not have moist mucous membrane they'll have dry mucous membrane because water is also being removed it will cause hypovolemia because of hypovolemia mucous membrane will become dry jugular venous pressure also is not going to remain normal it will also decrease the patient has no edema lungs are also clear like there's no water retention also happening in the body and another thing is that blood urea nitrogen creatinine are within normal limits let's say it was that thing then definitely if it was because of furosemide or another diuretic like spironolactone spironolactone is a potassium sparing diuretic so even in that case there would be hypovolemia and there would be change in the level of blood urea nitrogen and serum creatinine it would definitely not remain normal so on the basis of that we can take out the two diuretics that are given furosemide and spironolactone because we know that sida is the one that is euvolemic very important that sida causes euvolemic hyponatremia euvolemic hyponatremia now that leaves us with lithium now lithium we know that lithium causes the exact opposite of syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion it causes diabetes insipidus it causes diabetes insipidus and in diabetes insipidus what happens is the body is either not having enough adh or if it has the adh it is not going to respond to that adh because the cells have become resistant to it right because of the resistance of the kidney to adh it's not going to respond so in that situation we will not be reabsorbing any water if we are not if we don't have adh and we are not reabsorbing the water then what will happen the serum osmolality is going to become high the serum osmolality is going to become high the serum is going to get concentrated because there is no water coming in by reabsorption and the urine osmolality urine osmolality is going to become low because all the water is going to be excreted in the urine so the scenario will be exact opposite to what we are dealing with and therefore lithium goes away so now we are left with carbamazepine so the answer is carbamazepine which causes sida and there is euvolemic hyponatremia like we saw euvolemic hyponatremia in this adh uh, is going to act on v2 of the collecting ducts and cause reabsorption of water leading to low serum osmolality high urine osmolality let's now summarize this whole thing so carbamazepine the anti epileptic drug sodium channel inhibitor causes syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion as a side effect ADH is secreted by the supraoptic nucleus it acts on the V2 receptor causes the free water to retain in the body now remember we are just retaining uh, water not sodium we did not take sodium into consideration anywhere but there is another hormone in the body which excretes sodium and water and is responsible for regulating osmolality what is that aldosterone right so with all this water retention happening the body decides we don't need aldo now let's decrease our aldo so there is going to be decrease aldosterone and because it is a state of water retention the cardiac receptors they are going to stretch and they are going to release anp and bnp so there is going to be increase in atrial natriuretic peptide because of the stretch and bnp and the overall effect of this thing is that because aldosterone is not there to reabsorb the sodium and the water we are going to release a little bit of sodium and water so we are going to increase sodium excretion in the urine increase urine sodium 
right and what this leads to is euvolemic hyponatremia this is going to lead to what is our euvolemic hyponatremia so overall because of the water retention aldosterone got decreased because it's a function of the aldosterone to cause like sodium water reabsorption now we are going to cause sodium water excretion and because of that even though the patient will get hyponatremia in our case the patient is going to be very importantly euvolemic because of decrease in the aldosterone the patient is going to become euvolemic and that is why in the vignette we did not see uh, any kind of creatinine change bun creatinine they were normal because the patient is having normal volume volume was normalized by decreasing the aldosterone in the body and what is the other characteristics that we know now of syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion we have seen from the question that the patient is going to have urine osmolality or urine concentration we can say that is much greater than the serum osmolality or serum concentration now we are going to see what all is the etiology really quickly what all could be the etiology for sida so one thing we have to remember is any time there is small cell lung cancer in small cell lung cancer there is ectopic secretion small cell lung cancer there will be ectopic secretion of ectopic adh so as a paraneoplastic syndrome we can end up getting syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion other than that in the etiology we can have any kind of cerebral thing going on brain things like stroke hemorrhage trauma right so all those etiology is also going to lead to sida then next up we can have any uh, any kind of drugs like we have selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor and we have got carbamazepine like in this question and then another drug could be cyclophosphamide the chemotherapy drug cyclophosphamide that can also lead to this thing syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion what these do is actually they increase the renal sensitivity to adh and because the kidneys will become more sensitive to adh so it will act as if there is like more adh in the body they are not actually like increasing so much adh as they are increasing the sensitivity of the kidney to the adh so that's how it all plays out then how will we treat this condition so for treatment we have to keep into account that the patient is having hyponatremia so we would try to increase the sodium and we should always remember low to high the pons will die so if we try to increase the sodium too quickly or too fast then what will happen is that the osmotic demyelination can happen so we have to correct the sodium slowly that's important slowly otherwise otherwise the patient can end up developing osmotic demyelination we can give salt tablets or saline in order to deal with the hyponatremia then after that fluid retention is happening and in order to counteract that we can do fluid restriction or we can prescribe the patient some kind of diuretics to decrease that fluid load and kind of as a last resort we give the patient vasopressin inhibitors like conivaptin we can also give the patient dimiclocycline dimiclocycline is a tetracycline dimiclocycline is a tetracycline class of drugs and tetracycline actually the side effect of dimiclocycline is diabetes insipidus and diabetes insipidus is the exact opposite of syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion therefore we use it to treat the syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion dimiclocycline so that's it that's all we had to know in this question it's very important to remember that it causes euvolemic hyponatremia that can help us eliminate a lot of like uh, choices